Oh dear, looks like we got another school complaining about furries again, but this time it's down under. And being as this is reported in a Daily Fail article, the comment section is absolutely rife. And I'll be reading some of them out towards the end. So stick to the end to hear some of the wild ass comments people have been saying. What is up y'all? I hope you guys have the most excellent day today. So today we're going to be reading a Daily Mail article which recently got published which apparently was a, a copy of an Australian article about a school full of furries and the complaints from the parent. And this is based around a Brisbane grammar school which for you Americans who don't know what a grammar school is that's like a posh joint for all the rich folks. So this is you know a really well-off group of parents whinging about furries apparently and of course the journalist has got absolutely zero clue about furries to begin with and working for the Daily Fail they have exaggerated the whole matter as much as possible sensationalized it made it sound as horrific as they can and they're repeating the same old tropes as always kids thinking they're animals making strange noises walking on all fours i mean i'm just surprised they haven't mentioned litter trays at any point in this and what really makes me laugh is the number of parents who've been left speechless by the woke attitudes that have been displayed in this. I mean, what the heck is that all about? And as if it somehow adds weight to the article, they've gone and hired a psychologist to have a look at this, Judith Locke, who has said she is unsurprised that this trend has emerged. Oh, we're, we're trendy. We're, we're trend. This must be the first time I've actually been trendy. Whoa. And she says it was only a matter of time before people started identifying as animals, especially since we romanticize them in our lives, television, film, and other sources of entertainment. And I'm guessing they didn't do their homework, otherwise they'd know we've been around for decades. I mean, this definitely isn't a recent thing. Furries didn't just crop up in the last couple of years, but should know that if she'd looked into it. And she also claims this could be students de delaying age-appropriate developments. I mean, wow, I mean, is there some point when we're supposed to grow out of being a furry? I don't know. I mean, I'm 37 and I'm still a furry. What about you guys? And as if having one psychologist wasn't enough for this article, they got a second psychologist. This one, an adolescent psychologist, Michael Cargreg who says in his 25 years of practicing, he's only ever come across one other person who has believed they are an animal. I mean, are, are we missing the part that furries don't believe we're animals? It's just entertainment for us? I mean, I'm guessing he's he's not really talked to this person or these furries in question. Otherwise, he would know this. So they've clearly got two psychologists who haven't got a clue about the furry fandom. Dr. Carr Greg goes on to say that once the stresses in the boy's life were resolved, he stopped identifying as an animal. So clearly, he, th this kid that he was talking to wasn't a furry. He was just someone who had some shit going down in their life. So nothing to do with a furry fandom whatsoever, in my view. But hey, it's a daily fail, so who cares about reality? They'll publish any old crap. And just like the Kentucky school I mentioned in a previous video, the parents are hopping mad. They are jumping to conclusions, and the press is not helping in the slightest. But poor journalism aside, this article really does highlight how the furry fandom is spreading around the world, getting into some place I did not expect it to get into. I was surprised to see this happening in a grammar school, an elite institution in Australia, where, you know, the next generation of suspiciously wealthy furries may be growing up now. You know, you really don't expect such a thing to crop up in such an institution. And it really does blow aside the nerdy male stereotype we're used to when it comes to dealing with furries. And I think the journalists in this article were completely bewildered, but not as much as the parents and the people in the comments section. The comments section was absolutely wild. But before I get into the comments, I am going to remind you all, I do have a Patreon. Um, my patrons help support me make these most excellent videos for you guys. You will be seeing their names appearing on the screen below. Um, please, swing by, consider joining, helping me make more awesome videos for you guys. Also, swing by my Discord. There's the most awesome and excellent people in there. You will not regret joining the Discord. Yeah, onto the comments section, and they range from confusion to indignation to outright anger. And it's hilarious. You have to go read the... Uh, you have to go read the comment section. The link is down below. Kick off with a guy from Orlando who says, 
once you started letting kids identify as whatever they want, this was bound to happen as teenage kids are incredibly gullible and stupid. Mate, mate, you're the gullible one and the stupid one if you believe that this article is accurate in any way whatsoever. And then we have a Yorkshire mum who's like, no TV, no phones, sleep in a cage, litter box on the garden, and feed them on cat food or dog food in a dish by the door for a week. And we'll see what happens. Love, love that's called child abuse. That's illegal, you fucking psycho. And then we got a bloke from Perth who's like, ignore them and they'll stop. Will we though? <laughs> And then we got a lady from the West Midlands who's like, beyond pathetic, no. Woke culture is going to be the end of us all. Because furries are woke culture now. Did you guys know that? We're, we're woke culture. Just being furry is woke culture. Doesn't stop there with the woke culture bullshit. There, there's dozens of comments going on about woke culture. Apparently, furries are so woke now and everyone complaining about woke culture is like, you know, this just seems like buzzwords used by people who just don't like other opinions on their own. But yeah, I've, I've dropped a link down below for you guys to go read the article. Read the comment section, it's wild in there. And I want to wish the best of luck to all these Brisbane furries who, you know, are just coming into the fandom. I hope you guys have a most excellent time being furries. If any of you guys are watching this video, please drop a comment down below. Let me know. I know a few people from the Kentucky school where there was furry supported dropped comments in that video. So please let me know if you're going to this school and what it's actually like, whether this article is complete tosh or not. But other than that, for everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. But other than that, you have a most excellent day, an amazing weekend, and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, take care, ta -ra.